Okay, so uh, now we can see, as shown in our previous part one video, uh, we have the regular table over here. Let's just focus on this table right now, not look at the other tables right now. We have a regular table over here with uh, five columns, civil number, employee name, designation, region, and salary. And uh, we have the serial number one, an employee named Scott, who's a manager, who's working in America, has a salary of $14,000. Uh, number two, Manoj is a director who is working in India with a salary of one lakh fifty thousand. Number three, uh, Mr. Swam, who is an executive who is working in Singapore at fifty thousand. So let's suppose we have this table over here in our database. And uh, to tell you the basic concepts of data warehouse, you know what's a data warehouse, and what's a OLAP or a DMR table, and or a, a database, and what's the difference between an RDBMS, DBMS, or this databases. Uh, we have created this table. Uh, let me clarify first. An RDBMS is a relational database management system. DBMS is a database management system. So DBMS is a collection of you know databases or tables or structures. RDBMS is a basic database which is used across the globe right now. We have obsolete database management system because right now we create small small tables and we create relationships between them using foreign keys, surrogate keys, primary keys. So Whenever you create relationships between tables, those tables, when from a database, that database is known as an RDBMS. That's a relationship database management system. Okay, and ORDBMS is an object oriented relationship management system. You can skip on that right now. Let's just focus on RDBMS and a data warehouse. Now, uh, to tell you the difference between a data warehouse and an RDBMS system, how they work upon, how they function, I'll tell you this. Let's consider the regular table over here with the serial number, the employee name, designation, region, and salary. Okay, let's just skip the serial number for a moment. Okay, we have this table the employee name, designation, region, and salary. Now, in an RDBMS or data warehouse, we have the same table. Let's suppose Manoj or Ram, let's suppose Ram was promoted and he became assistant director and his salary increased from $50,000 which is present salary to $75,000. So in a RDBMS or a DBMS table what will we do? We will use an update command to update this particular row and we will make his designation as assistant director okay and we'll update his salary to $75,000 we'll come at that okay that is how an RDBMS table works but in a data warehouse database or a table there is no term as update we never ever update records what we are going to do is right now here is we're going to insert one more record over here with the same common columns plus the updated one sorry assistant director Let me change that to director he's still in Singapore and his salary increase to this is what we'll do in a data warehouse we will increase and we'll add another column, another row to it with the changed fields. Now, why do we do that? In a data warehouse, we normally are looking at analytical processing or we're looking at analysis of the data. We are not looking at just entering of the calls in an ATM machine and from an ATM machine and just, you know, seeing the transactions. No. We are analyzing data. We are doing data mining on data warehouses. So that's why we want the previous record to be present as well. So that we can compare from the previous record and we can see what were the changes, what changes were done, what updations were done. Okay, now how do we consider the, you know, if we have to consider that uh, what is the RAM's present salary, you know, there is a timestamp field as well in the data warehouse. From that we can see which is the latest timestamp and what is the salary of Mr. Vam. That record will pick it up, 
will show you the salary and that will be this record. If we need to compare at what time, at what date the change was done, we can see the current timestamp of this. At that timestamp, this change was brought and the change was the salary change from 75,000 and the designation change from executive to assistant director. So that is how a data warehouse works. Okay. And that's why we have a lot of records in data warehouse because we do not update them. We just add another record. Okay, now uh, moving ahead to Cognos. You know, Cognos is a big suite of applications. It's not just one, you know, studio when we are making reports. It gives you a host, a lot of number of studios. And uh, before moving on to all these studios, I'll just tell you, Cognos has two kinds of studios available. One is a web-based and one is a Windows-based. Cognos is basically a web-based application and we are able to develop reports as well as view reports on the web. Okay, so uh, what are the web-based applications that the Cognos have? As shown over here, you can see Report Studio is one studio which is the most important report application. Okay, the Analysis Studio Analysis Studio is used to do analysis on DMR or dimensional packages oblique data. Okay, I'll just tell you again what in detail what the studios do. So, a Query Studio is an ad hoc report studio. Event Studio is to manage events. Workspace Advanced is also like a business advanced studio. Okay, now uh, all these are web based, that means you can open the Internet Explorer or maybe Firefox and you can work and you can just start the uh, login URL and you can log in inside the studio and you can start working on them. Report Studio is the basic, the most advanced studio where you can create all advanced reports, basic reports, all that reports which has all the features available. Analysis Studio is basically uh, a studio where you can you can you can uh, make you can do an analysis on small sort of data. You can you know capture data on your own. You can bring it to and make some tables, make some charts, and see and do analysis on your small small data. But it works only on dimensional packages. We'll cover later what is dimensional and what is relational packages. Okay, so uh, Query Studio is also a small ad hoc studio, which is you know basically uh, Analysis Studio, Query Studio. They are all works with ones. They are used by the business users, by the client, for their own reporting. If they have to make a small report, they don't always go get back to the teams, to the uh, to the IT people. To okay, so this is the change request I'm giving you. Please approve the change request. The change request go and get approved, and then it's a huge process to develop the reports. Will be tested, moved from dev to QA, QA to production, and then shown to the client. That's a huge lengthy process. So there are certain small reports which the client wants to make on its own and he wants to see whether what is the sales figure of this particular sales employer, what is the sales figure of the particular region, he can just go and drag drop data. Although he has to have permission to open these studios and he will be requiring permission to access the data. There are certain packages which are, you know, given access to the clients, which have small amount of data, and there are packages which are given access to the ID people, which have the complete data. So, uh, Event Studio is a studio which are used by the reporting people, by the ID people, to create events, to manage your reports, to burst them onto the printers, onto the client machines, onto the emails and other stuff. Works with Advanced is also like a, you know, an advanced query studio where the business people can start working on their reports and they can create a little bit of advanced features like drill down, drill up and all that stuff. So all these studios are web based studios. Okay, now we'll cover the Windows based studios.